Hello to all you shining sunflowers and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, welcome, welcome. I'm Michelle with Chasing Solana, where we discuss all things revolving spirituality. We dive deep into the mystical and esoteric and we learn ways to connect with our highest self so that we can raise the vibration of our planet and humanity. So shout out to all you life path number 11s. This video is just for you. We'll be talking about the shadow side of life path number 11. I went ahead and lit some Palo Santo so we can just clear this energy. You want to receive all the goodness despite all of the shadow aspects that I'm about to talk about. So just, you know, receive it if you'd like. It's hard for us to talk about our flaws or things that, you know, may be hidden within the dark, things that we don't necessarily like to address. But I just want to bring some awareness and highlight it for you guys. I've been learning a lot about internal family systems, which essentially is the ability to integrate all of our parts within us, the good, the bad, the ugly, the light, the dark, whatever it is, and to make ourselves whole. So even though we do have shadow aspects to us, we still have to embrace them and accept them for what they are, right? Now, some of you guys might be offended by the things I say. And, you know, if you are, then maybe that just means that you have to look within yourself and analyze why you are getting offended by some of the things that I might be saying. Maybe you won't be, you know, Life Path 11s were very receptive. And remember, I'm a Life Path number 11 too. So I'm talking about myself here as well. I hope nobody feels attacked in this. Now, Life Path 11, I like to describe you guys as the spiritual healer. We are the spiritual healer. We have a very special gift for emanating natural healing energy to those that we come in contact with. And whether you're aware of it or not, there's something about a life path 11 that just radiates positivity and light. But we all know that there cannot be light without darkness yang without yin, black without white, highs without lows. And although Life Path 11s, we have a highly spiritual vibration full of compassion, enlightenment, and illumination, there are other qualities that we possess that isn't all sunshine and rainbows. So in this video, I'm going to talk about the shadow aspects of Life Path 11, as well as things that you can do to vibe in positivity. So if you're all suited up, let's take a dive so life path 11s first things first we can sometimes have this know-it-all complex about us and i say this because we're old souls right and being an old soul we are filled with wisdom and knowledge we love learning new things sometimes we just know things without knowing why we know things and we're continuously learning and we enjoy spending our time seeking the truth so it's not uncommon for us to spend a majority of our time diving deep into new subjects and learning everything that we can about said subject. Because of this, we may believe that we have knowledge that others do not. We think that, okay, because I've read X amount of books about this topic, I've spent hours on YouTube and Google learning about new things about this topic, then we might be, we might feel like we're experts. Sometimes people say, jack of all trades, master of none. I think that that can resonate with Life Path 11 energy, but sometimes we do feel like we're the master and sometimes we do feel like we know it all. So when these characteristics are unbalanced and you are leaning more towards the side where, you know, I know everything and I've studied this so I know it, then we can be perceived as a know-it-all. And in this instance, we'd be hesitant to listen to the opinions of others. I've definitely been in this situation where someone was trying to educate me about a topic that I believed I knew a lot about and I wasn't receptive to it. And that's because I thought, what else can you possibly tell me? I learned everything I needed to know. There's nothing else you can potentially tell me that I don't already know. What's important is we have to be receptive. Yes, it is true that there are things that we just know. We are extremely intuitive. It's also true that we're avid researchers and there are so many topics that we do know quite a lot about. However, we have to keep an open mind and an open heart. Although we can be the teacher, remember the teacher must also be taught. 
So it's important for us to remain humble and curious. You can learn so much just by listening to the thoughts and ideas of others, even if it challenges your own. We can't be on a high horse carouseling around as if we're the wisest in the room. Remember, there will always be someone smarter, someone wiser, someone more intuitive. So it's very important for us to be receptive to when other people are trying to educate us. Just be open. You don't have to take in everything, right? You can listen and and whatever doesn't resonate, it doesn't resonate and that's okay. But you can learn a lot from it. You can learn a lot from hearing the ideas of other people. You can learn a lot just by how they present a topic. It can spark a new idea in you where you learn something from it. So it's important to remember that you don't know it all and to take a moment to listen and be receptive. Tap into that two yin receptive energy. And when you're feeling like you're the know-it-all, step out of that one energy. <laughs> Moving on, Life Path 11s. Whew, this is this is one I'm, I love talking about. The next shadow trait. We can be indecisive and lack direction. As I said earlier, we are highly intuitive. And in fact, we are the most intuitive of all the life path numbers. But we all have experienced times where we don't trust our intuition. For most, intuition is something that must be developed, right? But for us, it's usually innate within us. But we still have to develop it to the point where we're able to trust it and able to discern what it's trying to tell us. A lot of people are guided by their intuition, but it's a skill that requires strengthening, just like building a muscle, just like going to the gym, working on your glutes. You have to work on developing your intuition and strengthening it to a point where you are able to trust it. When you don't trust your intuition, you can become stuck between using your gut or your logic to decide. You can get caught in what is called analysis paralysis. So in this state, you're basically super indecisive and you have so much trouble making decisions that you basically don't even make a decision because you're going back and forth trying to decide and you get so overwhelmed that you're just like, ah, forget it not gonna make any decision at all. Not trusting your intuition can lead to a lack of direction. You become inert, stuck in the same place that you started, almost as if you were a truck stranded in mud. You, you ever seen a truck like on the side of the road that got stuck in mud and they're just pressing on the gas, hoping that they'll get out, but they're not moving? That can happen to us if we don't trust our intuition and if we have these difficulties making decisions. So also because we vibrate in the one and two energy, a lot of the times we feel so conflicted and contradicted within ourselves. So that can be another factor too. We, we get so confused as to which way to go, right? But we have to be able to balance the one and the two energy. That's very important. The opposition between the one and two causes even further confusion. And we're not always sure how to balance these energies. And we can experience difficulty in making choices which will lead us to this overwhelming feeling of maybe even anxiety or depression. So it's very important for us to learn how to balance our energies between the one and the two, how to strengthen our intuition, practice exercising that muscle of intuition, whether it be through tarot, pulling a, a tarot card every day and seeing where it guides you and whether it's picking up on how somebody else is feeling or maybe what someone else is going to say. There's a lot of ways to practice building your intuition, but I can talk about that in another video. Let's move on to the next shadow aspect of life path number 11. We can be prone to anxiety and depression. Life path 11s, we're light workers and we have a strong affinity to spreading peace happiness, and love throughout the world. We have this burning desire to see others feeling joyous and in a state of happiness and a state of harmony. We love seeing other people happy, but let's just face it. Our planet has a long way to go. There is so much destruction and negative energy still swirling around in this world. And far too often we hear stories about war, destruction, and random acts of violence. And for us, this is extremely disheartening because what we yearn to hear are stories of peace, expansion, 
intentional acts of kindness instead of random acts of violence, okay? We want people to intentionally be kind from their heart. We want that pure love to radiate throughout the world. We just want peace and harmony. When we're privy to the negative energies and occurrences happening throughout the world, it can really bring us down. It can really affect us and cause us deep sadness. And we may begin to think to ourselves, we're not doing enough. I'm not doing enough. How can I change this? How can I help make the world a better place? And we feel like the burden is within us. It feels like there's this burden on our shoulders as we try to discover and understand how we can help humanity. So I would say the first way to combat this, it's imperative. It's so imperative that we stay away from the news. And I say this because news networks typically promote stories of violence, hate, negativity. Think to yourself, really, how often do you see a story of positivity on the news. The ratio to negative versus positive that's distributed by the media is super uneven. We're more often seeing negative things and positive things. We have to be very cognizant of the type of content that we're consuming. We're very sensitive, so sensitive to everything, positive energy, negative energy, we pick it all up. So we have to keep our force field strong. We have to protect our energy. And by protecting your energy, this includes staying away from negative content. To be truthful, the world has a lot of dark energy entities and negative forces. Life Path 11, we are prone to encountering energy vampires and they're quick to drain the life out of us, okay? I've encountered so many energy vampires who literally just sucked the life out of me. Opposites attract, right? <laughs> because we are generally this ball of light, we do attract dark energy. So when this happens, our life force energy is literally depleted and we begin to feel tense and unnerved and filled with sadness. So you have to be aware of your energy, okay? If you start to notice a sudden shift in your mood out of nowhere, like maybe you were feeling happy and then all of a sudden you feel down, depressed, analyze who you're around, okay? Who's around you right now? Why did your energy shift? Notice your thoughts and what you were doing at the time. What were you thinking at the time? Spiritual warfare is not just a myth. There are truly individuals roaming this world with the sole purpose of spreading negativity. So we have to protect our energy. We have to cleanse our space. Get some sage and smudge sage. Get the palo santo, you know, to keep in the positive, good energy, okay? Maybe get some crystals to protect you. I like to use amethyst for psychic protection, spiritual protection. It's very helpful. Get some tourmaline. You have to protect your energy, Life Path 11. Now further, as a master number, we enter this realm with a persistent feeling of pressure. We can feel that it's our duty to accomplish something big, like making the world a better place, for example. From an early age, we generally know that there's something that we came here to do. Whether we know why we know this or not, it's just a feeling that we have, like there's something I have to do, there's something I have to do. But discovering that, it can take time. Remember, master number 11s, we oftentimes take time to mature, okay? We may not even discover our purpose till later on in life. With that said, I know for me, sometimes I'm very impatient. You may be impatient as well. Sometimes we may feel like we aren't doing enough or like we haven't made significant progress yet or you know we haven't helped the world in a significant way. And although humanity has come very far, there's still a long way for it to go. So we have to realize that with every good deed that we engage in, we are making an impact. Be mindful of your karma. Continue to do those acts of service and genuinely, not just because you want to receive something good, but because you really believe that it's going to spread like wildfire. So with the realization that the world still has a long way to go, that can also contribute to those feelings of anxiety and sadness. So we can be prone to anxiety and depression and that is something that we do have to work through. Moving on, Life Path 11s. Like I said just a minute ago, 
We are slow to mature. We can be slow to mature. It takes time for us to bloom and it's not uncommon for us to feel confused about our purpose or our mission. So yes, there are some people who have it all figured out by their mid twenties or even before then. But for us, we may not recognize our goal or our potential until our 40s or even our 50s, right? The important thing for this is engaging in self-development as soon as possible. The sooner you begin, the more you'll learn about yourself and the sooner you'll be able to make an impact on others. Self-awareness is key. Self-awareness is literally a superpower. When you know better, you do better. Because if you know something, you have the ability to change it. So learning about yourself from an early age can t- save you a ton of heartache, confusion, anxiety, and diving deep into your personal blueprint will provide you with understanding about why you do certain things. It'll give you more insight into maybe hidden talents that you didn't know you had. It may even guide you towards your personal dharma, your duty, your purpose, okay? So although Life Path 11s, we are like fine wine, you know, we get better with age, we can accelerate our process by learning about ourselves now. Learn all about your numerology chart, your natal chart. You want to learn about your birthday number, your life path number, your soul urge number, your personality number, okay? Your destiny number. All of these things are so important to learn. You want to learn about your rising sign, your sun sign, all your signs, your moon sign, all of your signs. They're all important to know. Really take a dive deep into your natal chart so you can understand yourself better okay maybe you want to also take a look into your personality type the Myers-Briggs type indicator is a great assessment tool to kind of understand yourself more as far as personality goes maybe look into your Enneagram use any self-development tool that you're interested in to find out who you are self-development self-awareness is key Life Path 11, let's move on to the next shadow aspect that we have. Scattered energy, lack of direction, and being ungrounded. As a master illuminator, we have this intense energy. We have the energy of the Life Path 1, but magnified because it's the double one. It's that 11 energy. And due to the intense energy that we have, it's not uncommon for us to become scattered or ungrounded. We have a very close connection with source. Very close. We're very spiritual. We're very intuitive. Our connection, easy, right? So because we have such a close connection, it's not uncommon for us to remain in the clouds. We can be connected with our upper three chakras more so than our lower three chakras. And we often forget to stay grounded, to keep our feet planted and rooted in this earth. We also tend to receive multiple downloads on any given basis. I know at least for me, my thoughts, constant, right? Lots of, lots of thoughts coming daily. I think I read something somewhere that said we as humans experience about 74,000 thoughts a day. That's a lot. I can just imagine for Life Path 11s, it might be like double that. I would not be surprised. Ideas formulate in our head almost automatically. We can be thinking about one thing and then boom, we're thinking about something else and that leads to something else. And next thing you know, it's just like, oh, where did I even start? So we're easily inspired and we can imagine literally almost anything. But like I mentioned, this can translate into a lack of direction because We don't even know where to start. So couple that with our proneness to being indecisive and not following our intuition and a soul without direction is born. So Life Path 11s, it's imperative that we learn how to ground our energy. This is not negotiable. In order for us to manifest the many ideas that we receive, we have to ground ourselves. Grounding basically will help send the extra energy that we do have back down into the earth. 
It can help to alleviate any anxiety or tension that we may feel as well. And being grounded helps us to focus our energy and cultivate our thoughts into reality. A lot of the times, yeah, we have great ideas and wonderful thoughts, but we don't always manifest them because we don't know where to start. So it's okay to work on several projects at once, but don't overdo it. If you have a lot of things going on, maybe try to channel your energy into one thing for a certain period of time and see how that goes before you disperse your energy to all the other things. So like I said, life path number 11, it's so important for you to ground. Ways that I like to ground, I like to walk outside barefoot in the grass. I go into the backyard, my shoes are off, and I plant my feet into the earth and I stand there and I imagine my extra energy being sent down through my chakras, through the root chakra to keep me planted in the earth. And I just stand there for a while and you know, you can pray or say whatever it is you wanna say, anything that helps you to feel more relaxed and more grounded. That's just one way to ground. Another way that I enjoy grounding is yoga. Yoga is very helpful very imperative. I like to practice yoga poses, seated yoga postures so that I'm sitting directly on the earth. I have contact with the earth through my sitting bones. Lots of sitting postures can help with grounding. Shavasana is a great way to ground. Yoga in general is just amazing. So if you haven't gotten into it, I highly recommend getting into it as a way to ground, as a way to bring peace into your life, as a way to be more connected with spirit, as a way to yoke your energy. Moving on to the next shadow aspect, Life Path 11s, we can be the lone wolf. As a double one, we are extremely independent. If we're not like in that two energy where we can be codependent, but that's something we'll chat about a little later. We tend to be self-motivated and we don't mind being alone. In fact, we enjoy being alone. However, the amount of independence that we possess can lead to loneliness. It's not always easy for us to compromise and we can be stubborn and neglect to compromise with other people. And there are many times when we prefer being by ourselves because we don't want to compromise our desires. We don't want to not do what we want to do. A lot of the times we have that laser focused energy and if we want to do something, we're going to do it. So this can also be seen as stubbornness, even selfishness, right? People may view like you're really selfish and they may push you away. I can recall a time when I was out of town with a couple of people and I wanted to go do an activity, right? I wanted to go check out this area of town and the other people, they agreed, right? So we had started to go to this area and then out of nowhere, one of the girls changed her mind and didn't want to do it anymore. I said, that's fine. I'm still going to do it because I still wanted to do it. And would you believe she was upset at the fact that I still wanted to do it and that I didn't mind separating from the group. So people can look at us as being selfish for pursuing our desires. And while it's not necessarily selfish, sometimes there does have to be compromise. Sometimes we have to learn how to compromise, okay? And it's it's not always easy for us to compromise, especially if we're vibrating in that one energy, but compromising is important to have relationships. And in that life path two energy, we do desire relationships, friendships, and partnerships. So because we can be stubborn and not compromise, this can lead to loneliness because then we're pushing people away. Although we are independent, we all need connection. It's in our nature as human beings to connect with other people. So we can't let our independence go so far where it's molding us into a loner who only relies on ourself. Yeah, we're self-sufficient, but sometimes you do need people. Sometimes you do need help. Right? Sometimes you do need support. And even though you have that life path to energy where you're the one supporting others, sometimes you need to be able to accept 
support from other people. So remember, Life Path 11, you're not a Life Path 1. Life Path 1 did come here to develop the self and to be independent, but Life Path 11's, our mission is completely different. We have a lot of the same qualities and characteristics of a Life Path 2, and Life Path 2 is all about partnership. So the energy of the two is about harmony, peace, balance and support. So we have to be very mindful that we don't let our independent nature overshadow the connection that we develop with other people, okay? So we're here to develop both humanity and ourselves. So do what you can to find the balance between that one and that two energy. Moving on, life path number 11. I said I was gonna bring up the two energy and here we go. We can be selfless to the point where we become people pleasers. So having the energy of Life Path 2 makes Life Path 11's sensitive, nurturing, and empathetic. And we tend to sacrifice our needs to fulfill the needs of someone else. We have a tendency to be overly selfless and we forget that in order to care for someone else, we have to first care for ourselves. Far too often, we make ourselves the last priority, especially if we're in that two energy. Instead of focusing on ourselves and taking care of ourselves, we make time to tend and solve the issues of other people. While the issues that we have going on start to multiply and multiply because we're not addressing it. We're dispersing our energy into everybody else forgetting to recharge our own battery. And this is because we have the desire to see people happy. We have the desire to love and nurture and support people. As a result of this, we become people pleasers. We can go so far to the point where we're dismissing our own boundaries. We don't respect our boundaries. We let people walk all over our boundaries and we don't set them. And this can be so detrimental to us. There are times when, you know, that life force energy is on the brink of dying and needs to be charged ASAP. But we'll continue to say yes to something knowing that we have no energy. And that is just such a huge disservice to yourself. And this is because we have the fear of letting people down. So it's our duty for us to learn how to say no and how to mean it. Don't let anyone disrespect your boundaries. Don't disrespect your own boundaries. To function productively, we have to conserve our energy. And you know, I'm into yoga, so this is the idea of a yogic principle, one of the yamas called brahmacharya. It's the fourth yama of yoga. And brahmacharya essentially is conservation of our vital energy. Life path number 11, we have to learn how to master self-care and we have to learn how to identify when we need to take a break, when we need to step aside and recharge, when we need to rest. We can't let other people continuously use us. Remember, people can recognize the light that's within you as a life path number 11 and that's because you shine so brightly. And if you neglect your boundaries, they'll be quick to neglect them too, okay? They'll milk whatever they can out of you with no regard for how you're feeling or no regard for your well-being. Instead of committing to things without pause, decide that you need to take time to think about things before accepting something. Like if someone invites you somewhere, maybe you can say, that sounds like a good idea, but I need some time to think about it. Let me get back to you. Do you know what I mean? Or also, if you do commit to something and then two weeks later that thing comes up and you don't want to go anymore, say that. Say that you're not feeling it anymore and don't feel guilty about the fact that you don't have the energy to commit or to follow through on the commitment you made a few weeks ago. You have to conserve your energy. When you find yourself saying yes, when you really want to say no, it's a sign that there's a hole in your force field, okay? There's a hole in your aura somewhere and it needs to be repaired. So in these moments, take time to yourself to get back in tune with you and what it is that you need to be the best person that you can be, not only to others, but for yourself. Moving along, life path 11. It's a hard one to admit, but it's very true. We can have large egos and we can be very prideful. 
So Life Path 11, we are powerful. We do have a lot of power and we have the ability to alchemize, to manifest, to invent. And a lot of these skills that we have can sometimes be effortless. I know you know what I'm talking about. We may even surprise ourselves with what we come up with and how little time it takes for us to come up with something. I know you know what I'm talking about. We have this ability to channel our creative energy and that ability can lead us to having this overly inflated ego. It can lead us to have a lot of confidence. What And there's nothing wrong with having confidence, right? But it becomes a problem when the ego takes over. So we know that we're dope. Other people know that we're dope, but it is so essential for us to remain humble. Yes we're creative. Yes, we're magical. Yes, we're powerful. But so are so many other people. Okay, so don't let this go to your head. You cannot fulfill your mission if you are mounted on your high horse and forget to come off of it. Because that's not the point of Life Path number 11's purpose, right? We have to step off of that high horse and realize that we're all souls, spiritual beings having a human experience, regardless of your life path number. We have to let go of any pride that we develop due to our strengths. We have to be humble. We are naturally confident and we believe in ourselves wholeheartedly, especially if we're in that one energy. When we become aware of the power that we possess, especially if you're just finding out that you're a life path number 11, stay modest. Okay, we have to be modest and don't use the power that you have within you for manipulation or for any other reason that doesn't serve humanity or doesn't bring positivity to this world. So we have to remember we're not better than anybody else. Okay, a lot of the times people find out they're a master number and they're like, oh, I'm a master number. So that makes me better. No. It's actually a burden to be a master number because we have this responsibility that we have to fulfill. We are all here to grow and to learn from one another. So in times when you feel your ego taking over, take a step back and humble yourselves. Stay humble. And a quick way to express humility is to practice mindfulness and gratitude. We have to be mindful of our thoughts, of our actions. We have to recognize our errors, our flaws. This is a great way to do it by watching this video about your shadow aspects. It brings you back down to earth and makes you realize that you aren't perfect. Nobody's perfect. Only perfect person is God, right? We have to strive to be better. When we do get caught up in our shadow aspects or in our ego, we have to be better and be mindful that it happened and learn from it. We also have to be thankful that we have the ability to think about things that we can do to be a better person. Practice gratitude. Be thankful that you have the wherewithal to think, oh, okay, right now I might be a little too arrogant or right now I might be a little too cocky. Let me bring myself back down to earth. Thank you, God, for this realization. Thank you for helping me humble myself. You know what I mean? Like there's so many things or so many ways to practice gratitude. That's just like a quick example. But I say all that to say, remain humble. Don't be so attached to your ego. We are so much more than the ego. It's the soul that's important. The soul that lies within us, the Atman. Moving on, life path 11. We also have high standards, which can lead us to never being satisfied and being like a perfectionist. So as a master number, we feel like we have a duty to accomplish something great. So life path number 11s, we tend to not only want the best of the best, but we also want to be the best of the best. And our standards are so high and we don't like settling. So our high standards can lead to dissatisfaction, especially if they aren't met. We place a lot of pressure on ourselves and other people to be a certain way and to do things in a specific manner. A lot of the times we strive for perfection. And there can be so many instances where we fall short of our own expectations or other people fall short of our expectations. And because of this, this can lead to us being unsatisfied. So I want to say, don't have any expectations, right? We have to practice non-attachment to things. We have to have the ability to let go of the desired 
outcome. We have to practice non-possessiveness. This is a yama called aparigraha, and it means having the ability to let go and accept things for how they are. And if something doesn't happen a way that you expect it to be, observe it and accept it. And that's it. We have to remember Life Path 11, nothing is perfect. Flaws exist and flaws can be beautiful. We have to learn how to lighten up a bit and go with the flow. Follow the cyclical rhythm of the earth, of life cycles. Things don't always work out our way and things don't always live up to our standards and we have to accept that, okay? Letting go would be pretty helpful for you. And this way, when things don't turn out how we expect or fall short of our vision, then we won't have these feelings of resentment, disappointment, or frustration, which can turn into anxiety and depression if we hold on to it within our bodies. So we have to simply observe and let go. Remember, everything happens the way that it should. And it's okay to let loose from time to time and to not be so rigid and to not expect for things to happen a certain way. Just accept. Acceptance is important. So Life Path 11, with that being said, I just wanna say that yes, you are a light being, but remember that the shadow follows very closely behind us. Hopefully this video gave you some insight into the characteristics that we possess that may not be so bright. And with this information, you can work towards improving these traits when they do show up and, you know, observing them when they do show up and understand that this is a shadow aspect and this is part of me and I embrace it and I love it and I accept it and I work to be better. If you take one thing from this video, I want it to be to take care of yourself. Protect your energy at all times. Take time to rest and to recharge when necessary. Remember, we are made of energy and it's essential for us to restore and recharge our energy when it is low. I know sometimes we may feel like a conundrum, like a puzzle because we're vibrating in that one and that two energy, those opposing energies. And sometimes we can feel misunderstood or contradicted or confused, but please remember to find a way to balance these energies. Also, fluctuating between our solar and lunar energies is part of the rhythmic flow of life. And sometimes we just need to be, to observe ourselves without judgment, without attachment. And as long as you are aware that these traits exist, you can work towards improving yourself each and every day. I hope that this was helpful for you. I hope you gained some insight into yourself. If you have, go ahead and give this video a thumbs up to let me know. Leave me a comment below. I would love to hear what you think about these shadow aspects or if there's any shadow aspects that you've noticed within yourself as a Life Path 11 that I have not mentioned. If you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe to my channel so you won't miss any of my future content coming out. Thank you so much for watching this video and until the next sunrise or sunset, Namaste.